Hi, my name is Amy. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making the Victorian jacket to go with my 1890s Elsa costume. I will post a link up here to the playlist that has all of the other videos that are part of this costume in it. And um, I hope you enjoy. I'm going to be following the Truly Victorian TV 496. It is the 1896 ripple jacket pattern. I'm going to be making it out of a light blue cotton, lining it with white, possibly something fun. I haven't decided yet. Let's get sewing. After pre-washing all of my fabrics, the first step was to cut out each of the pieces from the main fabric, the lining fabric, and the plain white muslin I was using as the interlining. So I am still working on my Truly Victorian TV 496, which is the Ripple Bodice. I am not going to make a mock-up of this. I'm hoping that this is a wearable mock-up. Um, I double-checked my sizing, and so far I've never had to make an adjustment to a Truly Victorian pattern, so I'm crossing my fingers that it's the same way this time. Um, so the first step after getting all of the fabric cut out was to flatline the main fabric. You'll notice I cut the pieces out of three separate fabrics. I have this piece, which is the light blue, which is going to be the main fabric, and then the white. And you can tell this piece has already been flatlined. The white is just a cotton muslin that I'm using as the interlining. And I have now flatlined all of the pieces, and it's time to start the assembly. When it was time for assembly, the first step was to pin and sew the darts in each of the two front pieces. The order of assembling the pieces is to start by sewing the side back to the back and continuing on with each of the individual pieces until you have two uh, completed sides. side is completed, you sew the front piece to the backs at the side and front seam and then sew the shoulder seams together. So for the jacket boning, I need two of each of these lengths for the front, the front dart, the front side seam, the side side back seam and the side back back seam. And I'm using these pieces of boning. They've already been cut and sanded, but they were too short for the 18th century stays that I had them in, so I replaced them with longer ones. And rather than just throw these away, I hung on to them in case I could use them for a future project, which I'm doing right now, so it was a good thing. So that is what I'm going to do next. Uh, trim the bonings down to the right size and file them off and then make the casings that they will be sewn into. I marked the length of each boning piece and then wrote on each boning piece its corresponding boning placement. Once that was done, I cut all of the bones down to the correct length and then I used a heavy duty nail file to round off the edges. Thank you. 
The bone casings are made out of one inch strips of fabric cut with pinking shears so they don't fray very much. Each of the bones was pinned into the casing and then I used a zipper foot to secure the bones into the casing. Completed bone casings were pinned to just the seam allowance on their corresponding location of the main jacket. I used heavy duty linen thread and a large back stitch to attach the bonings to the seam allowance of the jacket. I was really careful to just stitch through the seam allowance or the lining and not through the main fabric. Before proceeding any further, I tried on the jacket to make sure it fit correctly. I did not try it on over my corset, which is why the bust darts don't line up correctly here. Now that the jacket bodice is assembled in the fashion fabric, I will be assembling the sleeves, starting with the fashion fabric and then the lining. And the sleeves, I will need to ease them together along this seam here. So I've put in some basting stitches. And once I get it pinned, I will sew it together on my machine. Once the main fabric sleeve and the lining sleeve were sewn, I turned the main fabric sleeve right side out and inserted it into the sleeve lining. I matched the sleeves up at the cuffs, pinning at the seam allowances, and then I sewed around the cuff edge to secure the sleeve to the lining. Once the sleeve was sewn together at the cuff, I turned it right side out and I pulled the lining into the sleeve and then I pressed the sleeve at the cuff to make sure it had a nice crisp edge. To insert the sleeve into the jacket, I lined them up right sides together, matching the correct points and seam lines on the sleeve and the jacket, and I pinned along the straight edge of the bottom of the sleeve. I then pulled down the gathering threads until the sleeve was gathered enough to fit into the arm side. I pinned that really well uh, to secure it in place.
Once the sleeves were pinned in place, I basted them by hand before sewing them in with my machine. I used black thread for this process so that these basting stitches would be easy to see and remove once the sleeves were secured in place. Once the sleeves were securely sewn in place, I removed the black basting stitches and I also took the time to remove the original gathering stitches as well. So the next step of Elsa's jacket is to sew the main body of the lining together using the same methods I did for the fashion fabric. So I'm going to start by putting the darts in the front pieces and then attaching all the pieces together. The process of sewing the lining together was the same as the main fabric of the jacket, so I did not um, go into that process step by step. Once the lining was finished, it was time to attach it to the main fabric. I pinned them in place right sides together, matching seams, corners, and darts. Once pinned in place, I sewed around the entire outside edge of the jacket at a half inch seam allowance. Once that was finished, I clipped the corners and trimmed curves and turned the jacket right side out through the arm side.
Once the jacket was turned right side out, I used a point turner to make sure all the points were nice and sharp, and then I pressed the seam to get a nice crisp edge on the jacket. Once I finished pressing the jacket, I turned under the edge of the arm side on the lining, pinned it in place, and then I hand stitched it in place using tiny whip stitches. Now that the basic jacket is done, I need to make the faux vest that goes across the front. This is going to be the main piece, just like the jacket, and this will be the lining. And then these are the buttons I'm going to use. The pattern says to leave these two long sides open and then just serge the edges once you turn this right side out, but I don't want any raw edges showing, so I went ahead and sewed just at a quarter inch around these two sides, and then I'll turn it, press it, and then top stitch these two edges. To make the buttonholes, I marked them evenly placed along the front of one side, and then I matched it to the other side and marked the buttonholes on that side corresponding to the first side so that they matched up when worn. Once the buttonholes were completed, I used them to mark proper placement for the buttons on the faux vest. I then used scotch tape to the secure the buttons in place before sewing them on using my machine. So here is Elsa's jacket, completely finished, including the 
false vest that goes across the front. It looks pretty wrinkly and weird on a hanger, but it fits perfectly and I love the way it has turned out. And this is it from the back. Once again, it's hanging a little bit funny on the hanger, but when it is worn, it's perfect. I hope you enjoyed the process of me making this truly Victorian ripple jacket. It really has been a much easier project than I anticipated, and it was a lot of fun. I'm hoping to eventually add some embellishment, maybe here and here, and possibly on the back of the jacket. But for now, it works just fine, and Elsa is almost complete. So, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from me, subscribe. And if you'd like YouTube to let you know every time I upload a video, hit the little bell. Thanks for watching.